To pay homage to Akira Toriyama and his work with Dragon Ball, I thought I'd make a video on the character that reminds me of his manga the most, Borsalino aka Kizaru, and how the, the perception of not only him but the admiral position has changed drastically. But before I do that, let's look on how Oda showcased the admirals from Aokiji no diffing Luffy early on. Of course, this is before Luffy even had gear second or gear third. Tuki Zaro low diffing, Rouge, Apu, X Drake, and Beja Hawkins, the supernovas, and then going toe to toe with the Dark King Silver's Rayleigh, the vice captain to the Pirate King Gold D Roger, which is just awesome then of course you have a kaino taking off half of whitebeard's face and of course surviving a rage onslaught from edward newgate to of course blackbeard running away from the smoke when a kind of pulled up on him and then of course we all know how kiji fighting a kind of for 10 days on punk hazard showing the mass endurance of of course these admirals to of course them fighting for the fleet armor position and a kind of winning after 10 days and taking off of course how kiji's leg also have to mention oda always knew how to highlight the admirals and now post time skip oda did leave some question marks like doflamingo breaking out of how kiji's ice but still thinking about fighting him, but then of course walking away. When we, when we know for a fact he wouldn't dare go toe to toe with Kaido when we saw the fear when Law threatened him. Then of course there's Fujitora not being able to cut the birdcage, and of course having Doflamingo clash with him. Like I said, Doflamingo did not want to smoke with Kaido, but it's clashing with Admiral Fujitora. And then of course Sabo during that arc went at it with Fujitora and a quick tussle, and of course Zoro and Luffy not getting low diff by Fujitora. And I, I can even mention recently in the Reverie arc when Fujitora was going at it with, of course, Kadosu of the Revolutionary. So the Admiral position is a little shaky with these new Admirals. And Greenbow, of course, is going at it with Morley. And Greenbow, of course, getting stopped by Shanks recently without them even without even Shanks being on the island Wano. Using Conqueror's Haki just to stop Greenbow was intense and really made the Admirals look soft in comparison to the Yonko. Now, I must admit, Greenbow did low diff King and Queen, though they were not 100%, unlike Shanks, who made sure Eustace Kid and Killer were 100% before low diffing them. And then, of course, I want to mention Greenbow did tank a Conqueror's Haki coded attack from Yamato and defeat Weevil, who was compared to Whitebird in his prime or his youth. This was said by Kizaru himself. Then, of course, I want to mention Aokiji taking out half of the Blackbeard pirates when, of course, negotiating with Blackbeard to join his crew. And then, of course, defeating Garp. And we all know that Garp is the legend of the Marines, hero of the Marines. He's Whitebeard without the sickness, and Aokiji took him out. Now, I do want to say this, of course, he got major help from Shitty the Rain stabbing Garb Shield Rain is kind of like a vice captain level character of the of a Yonko. And then of course we also know that he got minor help from Avalo Pizarro, San Juan Wolf, and Vasco Shot, though it wasn't big. Of course, I do want to say this: the story continued on Egan Island, like a kind of taking off half of Kuma's face and his foot, but letting him escape and having the Celestial Dragons make fun of him, to of course Kizaru making Luffy Gear Fifth run out, though he did not be able to move after one punch from Luffy to the dome. But recently the tides have changed with Saturn's involvement. The Admiral Aura is at stake, making us really look at Akainu in the Gorosei conversation back in chapter 793 really differently. So Kizaru, yes I said it, the Admiral situation with the Kizaru is really bad and today we're gonna do a deep dive on Kizaru and how his character is so pivotal to the Admiral position in the One Piece story. Now Kizaru was always a interesting character when it comes to the Admiral position because we had a guy Isaac Aokiji and Akainu fighting for that top fleet admiral position, but Kizaru looked like he was very content at the admiral spot. He's been the, he's been the longest admiral we've seen. Akainu went to fleet admiral, Aokiji left the marines, so Kizaru is definitely a staple of the admiral position. Now I do want to admit, when we first seen Kizaru and him going against the supernovas, we, there was a little bit of nervousness when Apu, of all people, Scratchman Apu, yes, the guy who pretty much, we've seen Apu in Wano, he was definitely lackluster, got, it pretty much got a nice hit on Kizaru, kind of packed out Kizaru, cutting his arm off and his body off, now I do want to say this, Apu did not have hockey, and Kizaru being a Logia, Kizaru quickly got back up and packed him out, but still, was definitely one of those moments where like, okay, maybe Kizaru can be touched, it was a question mark, but of course, we got confirmed that Kizaru didn't take no damage from Apu here. Now, I must admit, early on, when we saw Rayleigh stop Kizaru a Logia, like we've seen Luffy stop Logias in, of course, Crocodile with his blood, or Anel with the power of the rubber, rubber fruit, aka Nika, but I do want to say this, Rayleigh doing with hockey 
early on pre time skip stopping in admiral was pretty cool but it also made us look at the admiral position like okay you guys can be touched you guys are not like unstoppable and of course yeah it was a a vice captain of a, a pirate king doing it but still Rayleigh was not in his prime we even see later on Rayleigh is able to actually make an admiral bleed yes this is the first time we've seen an admiral bleed Rayleigh cuts off his cheek a little bit and he's bleeding now we've seen admirals bleed before of course Akano from Whitebeard Aokiji from Jozu but this one was different because this was in a sense a 1v clear 1v1 battle like this is clear cut now marine ford war kizaru doesn't really get too much crazy spotlight but he has moments like where we see marco blocking kizaru's attack that was meant for whitebeard and of course marco being a mythical zoan and stepping in of course marco's vulnerability is a unique source where it could have been anybody. It could have been Big Mom. It could have been Kaido. Like, we've seen Kaido do it. Kaido literally shot a fire breath, a blast breath, and Marco blocked in Iwano. So I will cut some Kizaru some slack here. But I do want to say this. Marco does, again, get a kick on Kizaru and kicks Kizaru out the sky all the way to the ground of Marine Ford War. Now, of course, Marco knows that he did not do any damage to Kizaru, but marco confirming that these admirals can be touched these logias with hockey and it was very very interesting now i do want to say this when marco used hockey against akainu it wasn't really that effective compared to when he used hockey against kizaru maybe showing a difference in the admiral position we even see during marine ford war kizaru being stopped by whitebeard from of course attacking luffy but kizaru just evades whitebeard's attack and shoots him of course that didn't do really much damage to whitebeard but it's showcasing like even when kizaru is stopped his dove ability is so broken that he still looks cool and gets an attack on a Yonko. Yes, Whitebeard was taking a lot of damage from Akainu, of course, and other factors like Squardo, and was sick and was old, but still, gotta give respect where respect is due. And the final thing I wanna talk about pre time skip, of course, is a Yonko's vice captain, Ben Beckman. Now, I do think Ben Beckman is one of the strongest vice captains to a Yonko we've seen, and we've seen a lot of strong ones, like, of course, Katakuri with Awakening observation hockey with future sight and of course conquers hockey uh conquers hockey which is very cool or king with his lunar special lunarian race or marco with his mythical zoan like we've seen crazy yonko vice captains like even zoro with his conquers hockey coding is an impressive vice captain to a yonko but ben beckman stopped kizaru guys yes i said it yo he had kizaru frozen now kizaru did go on attack later but still that's not a Yonko, that's not an Admiral, that's a Vice Captain to a Yonko. That's when we first saw the Admiral position looking a little shaky. Now, of course, Kizaru helped the, of course, Admiral position out really much during post time skip when we were just coming off Hokkaid Island. Big Mom was going after Wano to get Luffy, Kaido being there as well. So, Fifth Emperor Luffy, two official Yonko, and Big Mom and Kaido. And guess what Kizaru says? He wanted the smoke. He wanted to pull up to Wano. And it kind of stopped him because of the samurai. But I'll tell you guys right now. From getting stopped by Ben Beckman to pulling up to see Luffy, Big Mom, and Kaido, Kizaru, that was the proof that he was definitely trolling a little bit with Ben Beckman. And the Admiral's position got a little bit stronger than it was in that moment. Now, I must admit, let's fast forward to Egghead Island because this is where we see a lot of Kizaru actually fighting. And the first thing I want to talk about is Kizaru, of course, tanking an advanced arm and hockey attack from Santa Maru called a sumo strike and then of course saying my defense is super tough and one shot Santa Maru like you gotta understand Santa Maru is not weak so the fact that Kizaru did this shows you gotta give respect to this admiral and then of course we see a moment of Kizaru showcasing again his tough defense blocking Luffy with advanced conquerors hockey coating in his legs Kizaru blocks him and is ready to go up against an actual Yonko. So remember back in the days like 2016 when I used to make Yonko vs. Admiral debates? We're finally getting a Yonko versus Admiral fight in 2024 here. And then of course we have of course Kizaru with of course the situation of again blocking Snake Man with his kind of like sumo strike with combined with his Delphi ability, advanced armor hockey. Well, we've known Kizaru has had advanced armor hockey since Marine Ford War, so early in the story. So Kizaru blocking Snake Man, it's the fastest form of Luffy. It's really showcased that 
Yeah, Kizaru, yes, he's giving respect to Luffy here, but he still is a monster. Now, the tides of the battle change drastically when Luffy, of course, goes gear fifth. Yes, Luffy, of course, grabs Kizaru, and then, of course, we later on see spins Kizaru around like a child, and then sends him flying, which is, of course, off the island towards the ocean, which is insane power. The strength to throw an admiral that far off an island is insane. Then, of course, we saw the moment of White Star Gun, which made Kizaru not be able to move. And, of course, it was the first clear shot on Kizaru post time skip. Now, I do want to say this. This White Star Gun, we've seen a similar move in Wano that had Kaido knocked to the ground. And Zoro couldn't even knock Kaido to the ground with Ashura. So, the fact that Kizaru is not being able to move from the gear for the attack, I'm going to say you have to understand and respect Luffy. His power is insane. It's a Yonko. Just because Kizaru can't move. Like, you have to understand, he's still going up against a prime Yonko. No old age, no sickness, no a prime Yonko named attack. And of course, when Luffy gets back up and eats some food, he goes back to full power and he packs out Kizaru with another hit. And Kizaru actually sees the hit coming beforehand and still gets packed out. You have to understand, Luffy is really throwing Kizaru around during Egan Island, yo. He's not playing with Kizaru. And then to, of course, add insult to injury, Sanji blocks Kizaru's laser beam, which was different than Marco because Marco tanks it. Sanji actually blocks it, obliterates it, a laser beam. It doesn't even make sense, yo. And says love is stronger than light, which of course is a murder case because Kizaru's like, I don't even think physics even works like that, bro. So chill. So you have to understand, Kizaru's shock face and Sanji is not even a vice captain to a Yonko. He's a third to a Yonko. That's like, that's like uh, Jozu blocking uh, Mihawk during Marine for War. That's the equivalent of what is happening right now. So, and people give slack to Mihawk for that because people think, oh, if Mihawk's uncle level, why is Jozu blocking it? But Jozu has a diamond, diamond fruit. Sanji doesn't have no Delver ability, which makes it even more crazier for Kizaru. And then right after, we see Luffy actually grab Kizaru again, but this time he's coughing up blood, showing that Kizaru is now finally taking drastic damage from Luffy. The wear and tear of fighting Gear 5th is getting to Kizaru, and he's coughing up blood. So the fact that Saturn is relatively good in this grab, but Kizaru's coughing up blood and Oda wants to highlight this, there's levels to this shit. And then finally, let me talk about the final attack I gotta talk about. It's the Booming Dawn symbol. It's a very goofy attack, but let's be honest here. Luffy is toying with two monsters by himself. Now, I will give admit, Saturn did come back with, of course, recovery from this attack, but you have to understand, Saturn is unharmed, but Kizaru is harmed by this attack, getting thrown onto a ship, and it looks like he's just like so tired, and I'll tell you guys right now, it's, you have to understand, this is a 1v2 situation, the fact that Kizaru is getting thrown around in a 1v2 situation, not even a 1v1 situation, you have to admit, this for sure confirmed Yonko greater than Admirals, for sure. But the final thing I want to talk about is of course that the Luffy, the newest Yonko, versus Kizaru, the oldest admiral, showed us fans that Oda clearly wants us to differentiate the levels with, of course, characters like Blackbeard and Shanks taking out Kid and Law relatively easy, and Kid and Law out having a 3 billion berry bounty and being around the admiral level. So to see, of course, and you have to understand this, that Kaido, the strongest creature alive, and Big Mom, the monster, fell down from the Yonko position, yet the, still the power, the peak of One Piece is the Yonko. Luffy, Shanks, and Blackbeard, they are not Admiral level, they are Yonko level. Buggy is a joke, but still, the three Yonko definitely look to be at the top five of the One Piece story, and Kizaru does not look to be at that level. Now, I do want to say this, the last hope for the Admirals is Akainu, but right now with Kizaru, I'm telling you guys right now, they, I'm not saying he's weak, but if you had the Admirals at like the strongest in the One Piece verse, like a lot of people do, there's a mini not minority, but a lot of people do, then you probably are looking at Kizaru weak. But if you are very logical since the beginning of time, you know that Admirals are just Admiral level and Yonkos are Yonko level and there's always been a level difference. So guys, this is my take on, of course, this whole situation of Kizaru.